What's going on, guys? It's your favorite cast member from Hustle in Brooklyn. I'm in the heart of Best Style, hanging out with the owners, the founders of Cake Boy. I remember I drove past one time and it was like somebody giving out samples, and that's like, like I didn't even know it was like black owned young entrepreneurs doing it, you know, and I was driving by and she gave me a sample. Amazing, amazing. That's the type of things you gotta do to kind of, you know, drive in the community, let them know we're here. And right. We're here to stay. Super dope. I mean, but like, Cake Boy, you guys are young, black, you know what I'm saying? Like, what made you guys actually open up a, a cake? cake store. Brought a few cakes up to my school early years, about 13 years old. I was a freshman. The same time I was applying for my basketball team at my high school. Mm -hmm. So my coach was kind of teasing me about, you know, cake boy, this cake boy, or this cake boy, you want to bring another cake? Cake boy stuck from right then and there. So you you've been, you been baking. You've been a oh, long wow. time. Did you guys fail during the process? And if you did you fail and, and during the process of failure, did you guys say, yo, this is just like another opportunity or? I mean, multiple times. I've been baking since I was, you know, my very early teens. People come to me all the time, it's like, this is not the way, bro. You want to make some money, I'll show you how to make some money. What kept you going? Or what, like, not to cut you off, like, but mm -hmm. I really want to know, like, what, what separated you? What, what made you be like? Nah. My mentality, I always had the hustle mentality. I just knew prison was always involved if I was to go that other route. Right, you know, right, right. I was born into somewhat of a crime family. My father's been incarcerated for a very long time. I only mentioned him to say he was the reason I got into baking in the first place. He embedded in me the skill of baking, so I just continued with that. And yeah, I just now we're here. We got you know our own establishment. So now we're here. Wow, you guys picked the designs and everything. It was a process of going through different things, mm -hmm. just to kind of see what type of vibe we wanted, what type of vibe was kind of would go hand in hand with Brooklyn. We didn't want like a Manhattan style bakery in the heart of Bed Stuy. Speaking of which, you guys got Biggie on the actual cookies. Like that's that's dope, man. How did this come about? It's Bed Stuy. I just we we just want to pay homage to those that came before us and spread love it's the Brooklyn way, you know. Dope, dope, dope. Came to the back to check out a little bit of the process. This this doesn't happen all the time. My name is Celeste. I am the co-owner for Cake Boy. I am Cake Boy's wife and the cake decorator. Pretty much everything. I do everything. The big homie. What are some of the things that you gotta do, assist, or like help out with? Um, I mean, it's so much. It's a small business, and it's not a lot of us. We don't have like, a big staff, a big team. We're growing, so um, cleaning everything. All hands on deck. So cleaning, uh, cutting the cakes, decorating the cakes, making sure that when we're done with the cake, we're taking a picture of the cake. Just everything. If you would have told me 12 years ago when I met him, I would be helping him with cakes. Nah. nah. But it's dope. That's super amazing. Yeah, it's different, so. What advice would you guys give to, like, our people, you know, that are actually trying to start a business? Like, right. like what advice would you guys give them? I would say don't be afraid to try it. Because even when we come up with different, like, marketing ideas, it might sound good when it's in our head or on paper, but it might not always work. But the key to that is to never be discouraged, you know? Just because mm -hmm. something, plan A doesn't work, there's always a plan B or plan exactly. C. No Thank doubt. you guys for inviting me, man. I appreciate course, being here, man. For coming through. Congratulations on the business. No doubt, brother. Definitely appreciate will it, be man. back a thousand times over, man. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jesse from the new series Hustle in Brooklyn, and I'm here in bed -Stuy at Jordan Heads, and I'm about to chop it up with the founder, Calvin, about his hustle and a few keys to success when it comes to owning a business. Why did you feel, I guess, the need to start a business? Because I kept getting fired from my jobs. Same. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a real deal. Same. I've, I've learned from a lot of different entrepreneurs that that was one of the things that was a catalyst to create their own lane. What were some of the hurdles that you over, like had to overcome when developing your business? Raising the capital is um, number one. You can easily get it from a, a Suge Knight-like character, right. but that's <laughs> not the way to go. So that's I had to ask family, friends, some strangers, mm -hmm. if you will. You gotta be crazy. Yeah. You know, I, I remember um, watching Steve Jobs talk about being crazy and uh, loving what you do. I can easily go back and work in that field of nine to five, whatever happens. Absolutely. Like, that would drive me crazy. This is driving me crazy, but at the same time, the rewards are much sweeter than just getting a paycheck from me. How did you necessarily overcome the fear of, you know, just stepping out there on your own? I'm a filmmaker, I'm an artist, if you will. Um, okay. That's my first form, that's my first passion, my first love. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work for Spike Lee many years ago. I sort of started off as an intern and worked my way up as an assistant. It was a, it was a serious 
School of Hard Knocks. Fast forward, my, my passion level was to create, to, to keep filmmaking, to, to be a filmmaker. So I directed my own music videos for different artists. And this is pretty much an extension of, of that. I really don't think about the fear aspect of it. I just jump out the window. It's like, that's, that's just me. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the fear now mm -hmm. because I'm in the thick of it. But when you're going into it, it was like, I'm, I'm, this is me, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have a store. What's your, I guess, first pair of Jordans that you ever, you ever had and that made you like fall in love with the old idea of collecting sneakers and buying and selling? The first pair of Air Jordans that I ever owned was a pair of infrared sixes. Mm. They were OGs from 91. How I got them, I didn't buy them in the store. They were used. This, this cat I knew, um, he, 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 he wanted this sheepskin hat that I had. And I wanted his Air Jordan sneakers. We made a trade. The sneakers, however, they were size eight. I have a small foot. I'm a, I'm a size seven. I didn't care. <laughs> I put them suckers on, I wore them proudly. Mm -hmm. They look really way too big on my feet. But that's how I got my first pair of sneakers. Definitely stay consistent, Thanks, man. So. I love the really idea of the store it. and this fire, you know, so hopefully I can get a, you know, a few things. I'm gonna shop around a little yes, bit, see yes. what's going on and uh, Let's do it. Right.